Today, I wanted to talk about a documentary that aired on the BBC called India's Daughter. It shows us the people and events surrounding the rape and murder of a young medical student named Jyoti in 2013 in India. We learn a lot about Jyoti, how she dreamed of becoming a doctor, and how passionate she was about helping people. How she worked from 8 a.m. to 4 a.m. every day because her family was very poor and she had to pay for her own education. Through a lot of interviews with her parents, family, and friends, how she was loved. We also learn about Mukesh, the driver of the bus of the incident, also an alleged rapist. We learn about all the other perpetrators and how so many people actually blame her for what happened. I know India is fighting for this film to be banned, and generally I don't agree with any censorship, no matter how messed up it is, but to see the rapists and murderers talk so freely about their crime does kind of bother me. And, and in this case, this film actually made me uncomfortable because I, I don't want to see these guys talk so unapologetically about committing something so horrible. It, it, it is pretty traumatizing. And unfortunately, this is our best bet in learning about what happened through the mouths of one of the alleged rapists. There is an incredible amount of shame associated with rape, and before this incident, nobody really talked about it as much in India. Not saying that people weren't upset about it, but this really brought the outrage to a new level. In the documentary, you learn that a lot of the perpetrators, they had this mentality that they had to punish Jyoti for having the nerve to be a woman by herself at night, as if that's some sort of crime. They especially wanted to shame her because she shouldn't be out late at night with another boy. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous. Once again, watching this film is kind of a double-edged sword because it is an important film, but I don't like having to watch or listen to the murderers and rapists talk about it without any remorse. We learn about the mindset of a lot of people in India and it, it's, it's very scary. The murderers generally come from very poor and uneducated backgrounds and that's absolutely no excuse but what's scarier in this film is when we interview the lawyers of the accused unlike the perpetrators of the crime the lawyers are actually educated individuals and while they are more eloquent they spew the same kind of bullshit about how girls are like flowers and need to be protected and how oftentimes the girls at fault for doing things that normal people should be allowed to do it's incredibly ridiculous. I'm gonna keep using the word ridiculous because I don't know how else to describe it without saying worse or words. It definitely shows a very barbaric and outdated mentality. Another fact that stunned me was that in India, there's over 250 members sitting in parliament that are involved in litigation regarding sexual assault. Currently sitting members. That's ridiculous. With all that being said, it might seem like India is a really messed up place, but I think it's important to note that this film doesn't villainize all of India. Because this problem isn't exclusive to India, but it does take a hard look at a culture that doesn't respect or value women. And that's something that all cultures of the world still need to deal with and improve on. We do see the other side of India as well. We see the good in her parents. We see the good in the friend that was with her that was also assaulted. We see the huge protests after the incident recurred, protesting about what happened and for women's rights. People rallied around her and Jyoti became a symbol of all that was wrong, but also all that was good. I wanna talk about Jyoti for a bit. This terrible thing could have happened to anyone, but it just so happened that Jyoti was a very, very good and incredibly brave and very strong person. When the police first took her away, she wasn't hysterical. If you know anything about what happened, it's, it's, it's horrifying. Uh, the, the details of it are really gruesome. Even in her critical state, she was focused on giving the police officers details about what the perpetrators look like and details about what happened to help police catch them. The strength of will and mind it took to do this after such a horrifying incident occurred is just incredible. In her last moments while her parents were hovering over her bed, she was trying to be strong for them and even apologized for what happened. She really was an incredibly good, genuine person and it's a tremendous loss. There's a new generation that knows that kind of outdated thinking is wrong and there's hope. It's unfortunate that this had to happen, but at least it's been a very strong catalyst for change. And we see that in the film through not just student activists, but all types of politicians and people in positions of power 
that are willing to focus on this and start making a change. India's Daughter is a very informative and well put together documentary. It comes in in just under an hour. Um, I'm not going to rate this. I think it's a really important film to watch. India is the second most populous country in the world, so I think we should learn more about it. Please let me know if you have any thoughts or comments. Thank you so much for watching. Peace. Sir Stallone, there was Arnold Schwarzenegger, there was Hulk Hogan, and you know, these are all super big muscly men, and that really affected